A very good morning to all of you. Once again, welcome to the teaching session of Department of Urology, Savai Mansingh Medical College, Jaipur. So today we have a teaching session on uh, disorders of sexual development, TST. We all know uh, this was previously known by various other terms like intersex, uh, by, like uh, hermaphrodite, pseudo-hermaphrodite, and all these terms were later changed because that was a kind of pejorative. Well, that is, it was uh, producing some, uh, was uh, uh, contemptuous or it was not giving the right meaning. So it has been changed to DSD. So today, the presenter is Dr. Sayyam Nanwani, our resident, and the moderator is Dr. Govind Sharma, our faculty. So I would request uh, Dr. Govind to go ahead uh, and ask uh, Dr. Sayyam to present, please. Thank you, sir, and good morning, everybody. Today we have uh, a topic, very uncommon topic, to discuss that is uh, DSD, Disorder of Sexual Disorder Differentiation. And I would like to invite Dr. Sayam to present his seminar on this topic. Dr. Sayam, please go ahead. Very good morning to one and all. So my screen is visible. Yeah, make it full screen. Yes, sir. Is it okay, yeah, sir? Go ahead. Perfect. Okay. Uh, since uh, it's a topic uh, that I know uh, I'm going to make you people all sleep upon for the next 20 to 25 minutes with my 46 X, Y, deep and dull voice. So let's start this topic on a lighter note. Uh, I don't think there are many topics in urology uh, that chase you like ghosts other, right, uh, other than DST right from your PMT days to the uh, PG entrance days, to the super specialty entrance days. Whatever be the occasion, whatever be the exam, two things always stay common. First, you know that you don't know this topic. Second thing, I hope that I don't get a question on this topic in the exam. But the irony is we get a question that is something like this in the exam. That what is the characteristic of a patient with certain disease with these horrific choices. But uh, in the end, we see a choice which looks something like this, and we end up marking this choice. So on this slide, note, let's start today's discussion on disorders of sexual differentiation. Uh, this is one of the very rare topics in which the take-home message takes a front seat and should always be kept in mind uh, while when managing a patient of DST. Uh, certain things that should be kept in mind is that DST is a medical emergency and a social emergency. Always rule out congenital adrenal hyperplasia in a child who is not growing well and presents with adrenal crisis. It is always managed by a multidisciplinary approach and the phenotypic sex guides management. Do not commit the sex or gender of rearing unless you are very sure of it. And in the management of ambiguous genitalia, always remember that the parameters, the parameters of optimal gender policy, which were outlined by Mayor Balberg in 1998, which include reproductive potential, good sexual function, minimal medical procedures, and overall gender-appropriate appearance, a stable gender identity, and psychosocial well-being. Uh, introduction includes uh, disorders. These DST encompasses a group of congenital conditions associated with atypical development of internal and external genital structures. This atypical development uh, can be of gonadal sex, genetic sex, or anatomic sex. The affected individuals may be recognized uh, at birth due to ambiguity of external genitalia or may present later with postnatal virilization, delayed or absent puberty, or infertility. The estimated frequency of genital ambiguity is reported to be around uh, 1 to 2,000 to 1 in 4,500. Uh, first of all, talking about normal external genitalia in a male child, uh, which includes a stretched penile length of more than 2.5 centimeters, external genital opening at the tip of the penis, scrotum is relatively larger and having darker skin, and both the testes are in the scrotum. Normal female external genitalia in a female child uh, look like this uh, with labia minora and clitoris are completely covered by labia majora. The skin of the labia majora is somewhat darker. There's mu there may be mucoid or non purulent discharge from vagina and there may be occasionally mild withdrawal bleeding from vagina which may be seen due to maternal hormones. Defining sex versus gender. 
sex is a natural biology of internal and external organ which was traditionally considered to be a binary categorization and gender is the self defined experience expressed by social and cultural differences and distinctions defining a few terms first of all genetic sex which is determined by chromosomal complement of the zygote gonadal sex uh, uh, in the fetus first there are undifferentiated uh, differentiated gonads in the form of a bipotential gonad which develop in the genital regions and go on to develop into male or female gonads uh, in the presence of sry phenotypic sex which refers to the external appearance of genitalia gender identity is one's internal sense of gender gender role being one's gender related behavior and interests in society and sexual orientation mean choice of sexual partner partner and erotic interest normal sexual development occurs in two phases uh, which include sexual determination in which there is development of undifferentiated gonad into testis or, or ovary and sexual differentiation in which phenotypic sex develops through the action of gonadal and other hormones normal sexual development according to yost paradigm occurs in three phases first phase being establishment of chromosomal sex at fertilization second being development or the of the undifferentiated gonads into testes or ovaries and differentiation of the internal ducts and external genitalia these are the develop, uh, these are the uh, various characteristics which take part in development of in the development steps this is uh, moving on to the embryology this is a flow chart which shows the development of, um, of the embryology of the male and female reproductive tract here we can see that the bipotential gonad which is present which is termed till 6 weeks of gestation develops from the intermediate mesoderm in the presence of wt and sf1 genes in the presence of sry sry it goes on to develop into testes and sertoli cells in the testes at the 9th 7th uh, to 8th week of gestation secrete anti mullerian hormone which causes regression of mullerian ducts the leading cells secrete testosterone at around 9 weeks of gestation which is responsible for formation of male internal genitalia that is epididymis vas deferens seminal vesicles via the wolfian ducts testosterone is converted into dihydrotestosterone by in the presence of 5 alpha reductases which is responsible for formation of male external genitalia that is penis and scrotum uh, ovary is the default phenotype which uh, happens to form in the absence of sry Uh, WNT4 and DAX1 are the anti-testis gene that are discovered in the presence of ARSPO1. In the absence of anti-mullerian hormones, the mullerian ducts give rise to female internal genitalia, which includes fallopian tubes, uterus, and upper vagina. This is the same pictorial diagram. Uh, this is the same diagram shown in the uh, better picture form. Moving on to the evaluation of ambiguous genitalia, it is a micro, it is a medical and psychological emergency. always remember that this has to be handled by a multidisciplinary approach the goal of evaluation of ambiguous genitalia is to identify the precise diagnosis of the disorder and to assign a proper sex of rearing after discussing discussion with the parents depending on the diagnosis and anatomical and functional potential of the genitalia and reproductive tract it is very important to a certain certain points in history which includes history of sibling death or unexplained neonatal death in the family which may be indicated of congenital adrenal hyperplasia any history of infertility hirsutism and amenorrhea and maternal use of medications during pregnancy especially uh, contraceptives or steroids moving on to the examination the most important and the crucial finding is presence or absence of gonads bilateral absence go absent gonads with ambiguous genitalia may be suggestive of an overmasculinized female palpable gonads usually rules out possibility of an overmasculinized female and rarely over testis may also descend the rule of thumb that is important to remember is that any infant with bilateral impalpable testes or unilateral impalpable testes with hypospadias with or without ambiguous genitalia should be assumed to have dst until proven otherwise with both unilateral and bilateral cryptorchidism and hypospadias the incidence was dst of dst was found to be 30% overall incidence was 15% if an undescended uh, testes was palpable and 50% if it if it was impalpable Certain things that have to be kept in mind in examination that a stretched penile length of more than two point five centimeters should be present. You know, genital distance, which is the distance between the uh, anus and the posterior foreshaft, divided by the distance between anus and base of clitoris, is indicative of first trimester androgen exposure if it is more than point five centimeters. External masculinization score of less than seven is indicated of ambiguous genitalia. It includes phallus size. Labial scrotal fusion, gonad location, and location of external of urethral meatus. 
Mullerian structure assessment can also be done by a digital rectal examination with uterus being felt like an anterior uh, midline cord like structure. Lab investigations include teratyping or fish for XY chromosomes, serum electrolytes, serum testosterone and dihydrotestosterone levels, serum LH and HCG stimulation test, serum 17 hydroxy progesterone use is usually uh, taken on the day three or four, serum anti Mullerian hormones, and ultrasound of the pelvis to say, assess your Mullerian anatomy. This is a flowchart which is commonly present in all the textbooks of diagnosis of ambiguous genitalia. The thing that has to be remembered in this flowchart is that there are four uh, basic characteristics that we should always, always check to come to a, uh, a differential diagnosis of a uh, DSD, which include gonadal palpability, ultrasound or MRI for uh, Mullerian structures, MRI being done if ultrasound is equivocal. Third is levels of 17 hydroxy progesterone, and fourth is karyotyping. And these will help us to come to a differential diagnosis of a DSD or some form of a DSD. Surgical management includes a diagnostic laparotomy or laparoscopy and gonadal biopsy if there is diagnostic dilemma. Gonadectomy should always be deferred till sex is assigned to the child. Anatomic definition of urogenital sinus can also be performed via retrograde contrast injection and endoscopy. This is the classification of abnormal sexual development, basically divided into five classes. The, five, the first class being disorders of gonadal differentiation, which includes seminiferous tubular dysgenesis, Klinefelter syndrome, and syndromes of gonadal dysgenesis. Second being over-testicular DSD or true hermaphrodites. Third is 46XX DSD or a masculinized female. Fourth is 46XY DSD, an under-masculinized male. And fifth being unclassified form. Uh, this nomenclature has been revised in the recent time. First, it, earlier it was known as intersex, which has been converted to DSD. Male pseudo hermaphrodites have been converted into 46 XY DSD. True hermaphrodites have been converted into over testicular DSD, and female pseudo hermaphrodites being converted into 46 XX DSD, and so on. Moving on to Klinefelter syndrome, it is the most common major abnormality of sexual development. Uh, these patients are the males with at least one Y chromosome, and at least two X chromosomes have Klinefelter syndrome, incidence being one in 600 live births. This 47XXY complement results from non-disjunction during meiosis. There may be other variants with XXY, XXXY, and so on. The seminiferous tubules in these patients degenerate and are replaced with hyaline, resulting in small and firm testes. The serum testosterone levels are low, and estradiol and gonadotrophin levels are elevated, resulting in gynecomastia. Majority of these patients are azoospermic, and if the fertility is present, it is indicative of a mosaic form. There are poor secondary sexual characteristics in the form of female fat distribution, sparse facial hair, poor muscle development, and disproportionately long legs. They may be depressed verbal capacity and low frontal ex executive function, uh, which is because of underdevelopment of verbal areas or altered perfusion of the brain. Management includes androgen supplementation, reduction mammoplasty, and screening, and screening for breast carcinoma and testicular tumors. 46XX male, which is characterized by testicular development in subjects who have two X chromosomes and a lack of normal Y chromosome. They have male normal external genitalia, but 10% of these patients have hypospadiasis and all of them are infertile. 80% of them will be SRI positive, resulting in phenotypic features which are similar to Klinefelter syndrome, including hypogonadism, gynecomastia, azoospermia, and hyalinization of seminiferous tubules with altered hormonal levels at puberty, and 20% will be SRI uh, negative. 46 XX males happen due to translocation of Y chromosome material into, onto an autosome or X chromosome, and the management is similar to Klinefelter syndrome. Moving on to Turner syndrome, it is characterized by presence of only one normally functioning X chromosome, classical features being a female phenotype with short stretcher and lack of secondary sexual characteristics, and variety of somatic abnormalities, which include webbed neck, broad chest, and short ring finger. The di diagnosis should always be considered in any infant with lymphedema or any young woman with short stature or primary amenorrhea, incidence being 1 in 2500 live births. 20, uh, chromosomal patterns being 12 to 20 percent of these patients have isochrome X and 30 to 40 percent of these patients have mosaicism. Mosaicism with Y chromosome is responsible for causing masculinization and predisposes, predisposes to formation of a gonadoblastoma. Many of these patients are associated with renal anomality, anomalies. 90% having multiple renal arteries, 20% having renal agenesis and duplication, 15% having malrotation, and 10% having horseshoe kidney. These uh, patients can also be dis uh, diagnosed prenatally on the basis of ultrasound findings, which include increased nuchal translucency, 
लिम्फोडिमा सिस्टिक हाइग्रोमा वाक्टेशन ऑफ एटा रीनल अनोमलीज और बाय अनोमल रिजल्ट ऑफ फीटल केरोटाइपिंग देर में भी प्रेजेंस ऑफ स्ट्रीक ओवरीज इन दिस पेशेंट विच फॉर्म ड्यू टू फॉलिकुलर सेल्स विच आर इन एटिक्वेट these streak ovaries are usually white fibrous structures 2 to 3 cm long and approximately 0.5 cm wide located at the broad ligament uh, the treatment of uh, turner syndrome includes growth hormone to children estrogen at puberty and removal of streak gonads in mosaic patients a uh, very important thing that has to be remembered in turner syndrome as that majority of this associated congenital anomaly abnormalities can be explained by presence of lymphedema at critical points in development leading to an imbalance in growth forces which may be secondary to failed opening of embryonic lymphatic channels 46 xx pure or complete gonadal dysgenesis is characterized by normal female external genitalia normal mullerian ducts with absence of wolfian duct structures normal height bilateral streak gonads sexual sexual infantilism and normal 46 xx creatine the streak gonads result in elevated serum gonadotropin levels this is regarded as pure because these subjects typically exhibit none of the social stigma or uh, somatic stigmata which are associated with turner syndrome and it entails gonadal dysgenesis only treatment includes cyclical hormone replacement with the estrogen and progesterone since growth hormone is normal it is not needed in the treatment of these patients what is 6 xy pure gonadal dysgenesis which is also given the term of swear syndrome it is characterized by normal female genitalia well developed mullerian structures bilateral streak gonads and a non mosaic keratotype it happens due to loss of function mutation of sry or downstream signaling genes usually patients present in their teens with delayed puberty and amenorrhea there is also a significant risk of germ cell tumors with 35% of patients developing by 30 years of age most common being gonadoblastoma management includes the removal of both streak gonads and cyclical hormone replacement with estrogen and progesterone mixed gonadal dysgenesis it is characterized by a unilateral testis which is often intra abdominal and a contralateral streak gonad persistent mullerian structures are associated with varying degrees of varying degrees of inadequate masculinization most patients have a 45x0 or 45xy keratotype which is result of anaphase anaphase lag anaphase lag second most common cause of it is usually the second most common cause of ambiguous genitalia after congenital adrenal hyperplasia this phenotypic asymmetry of internal duct usually epitomizes the mechanism of local testosterone image production on mullerian and wolfian duct regression and development Now, now whereas a dysgenetic or streak gonad is associated with ipsilateral mullerian derivatives but a well differentiated testis is associated with the ipsilateral wolfian duct but no mullerian duct structure the risk there is risk of developing a gonadal tumor uh, which is uh, estimated with an estimated incidence of 15 to 35% with gonadoblastoma being most common germ cell tumors occur both in streak gonads and in the dysgenetic testis of individuals with 46x or xy mosaicism greatest risk is present in an undervitalized male with ambiguous genitalia these patients are also at increased risk of wilms tumor management includes gender assignment appropriate gonadectomy and proper screening for wilms tumor partial gonadic dysgenesis is closely related to mixed gonadal dysgenesis in that patients with abnormal sexual development have two dysgenetic testes rather than one dysgenetic testes and a streak gonad associated with loss of function mutation in 15% of cases of nr5a1 gene these patients are also at increased risk of gonadal malignancy management includes uh, gender as- gender assessment and uh, assignment and surveillance for malignancy over testicular dst or true hermaphrodite these are the individuals who have both testicular tissue and ovarian tissue which may take the form of one ovary and one testis or more commonly one or two ovo testis both the external genitalia and internal duct structures display gradations between male and female 60% of these patients have 46xx 33% have mosaics with y chromosome and 70 7% have 46xy in most patients the external genitalia are ambiguous with masculinized to varying degrees and 75% are raised as male and those who are raised as males 80% have hypospadiasis with cordy and 70% who are raised as females have clitoromegaly differentiation of internal ducts is also quite variable and related to the function of ipsilateral gonad testis and Over testes is usually present on the right side, and ovary is usually present on the left side. Individuals with over testicular DST have the potential for fertility if raised as female with appropriate ductal structures. Ovarian portion of over testes is usually normal, and it and it is the testicular portion which is dysgenetic. Due to functional ovary, they should be raised as female with gonadectomy of the over testes before puberty. Pregnancies have been reported and do not usually require hormonal supplementation. 
Moving on to 46, XX DSD or the masculinized female. This is a disorder of phenotypic sexual development in which 46 XX individuals with ovaries have partially masculinized phenotype, uh, masculinized phenotype and ambiguous genitalia. Most common cause of this being congenital adrenal hyperplasia, which also happens to be the most common cause of ambiguous genitalia in a newborn. 95% cases of CAH are because of 21 hydroxylase deficiency and rest of the cases being accounted by 11 beta hydroxylase and 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase deficiency. Rare causes include maternal steroid ingestion and uh, androgen secreting tumors in the mother, circle syndrome or BPES syndrome. Uh, there are mutations in the proteins necessary for testosterone, bio testosterone biosynthesis associated with under -viralization. The genes include SF1, L, uh, LH receptor, STR, and enzymes involved in steroid synthesis. Mutations in the antigen receptor gene, which is located on the long arm of X chromosome, interfere with testosterone signaling. This is the steroid pathway uh, showing the three hormones which are implicated in uh, congenital adrenal hypoplasia, namely 21 hydroxylase, 11 beta hydroxylase, and 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. Uh, the congenital adrenal hyperplasia is a classical example, example of inborn error of metabolism in the cortic cortisol synthetic pathway. There is diversion of pathway to androgen pro production with increase in ACTH release causing adrenal hyperplasia. Most of the cases are caused by deficiency of uh, 21 hydroxylase. Incidence varies from 1 in 5,000 to 1 in 15,000 with the highest rate in Alaskan Eskimos. The clinical manifestation divides the patient into three types, salt wasters, which have virilization and aldosterone deficiency, simple virilizers and non-classical forms. 25, uh, 21 hydroxylase deficiency, 75% of these patients are salt wasters and 25% are virilizers. Females with classical salt wasting have masculinized features in the form of clitoromegaly with varying degrees of labial fusion. They may, uh, they may also be, uh, the parents may be similar to hypospadiasis and may have a common neurogenital sinus opening and malignant duct structures are normal. The progression of masculinization of untreated females results in pubic and axillary hair developing prematurely, appearance of acne and deepening of voice. There may also be premature epiphyseal closure and short adult stretcher, though breast development and menstruation usually do not occur. Males with classical salt wasting are usually undetected at birth unless screened for usually present at two to three weeks uh, with failure to thrive, progressive weight loss, vomiting and dehydration. Vomiting may be so severe that a mis uh, diagnosis may be mistaken of pyloric stenosis. And if undiagnosed, this may result in death due to hyperkalemia, dehydration and shock. Without salt wasting, these patients present idly with precautious puberty. And the long-term implications include short stature and infertility due to testicular adrenal rest tissue seen in 20 to 40% of cases. In classic 25, uh, 21 hydroxylase deficiency, the plasma levels of progesterone and 17 hydroxyprogesterone are markedly elevated, and urinary levels of 17 ketosteroids and pregnant triol are elevated. Diagnosis can be made biochemically with use of radioimmunosay of plasma 17 hydroxyprogesterone, and a pelvic ultrasound demonstrating presence of bullet structures is confirmatory. The finding of abnormally enlarged or cerebrally form appearing adrenal glands on neonatal ultrasonography may represent the earliest diagnostic tool for congenital adrenal hypoplasia. Non-classical form represents as attenuated or late onset form that is variable in clinical severity because of its partial deficiency of 21 hydroxylase and timing of onset. There is 30 to 50 percent reduction in enzy enzymatic activity plus hyperandrogenism. Females usually present with hirsutism and oligomenorrhea, male partial pattern baldness, and polycystic ovaries. Men present with oligospermia and subfertility, though reversal of infertility with glucocorticoid therapy has been reported. Investigations show an increase in progesterone level and 17 hydroxyprogesterone, with management being glu glucocorticoids and plus minus aldosterone. 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency accounts for 5% cases. It present, patients usually present with hypertension, which happens due secondary to increased levels of deoxycorticosterone. Severe forms may present with marked virilization. Late, late onset forms present, at, uh, present as pre and post pubertal virilization. Diagnosis is conferred by increased deoxycortisol and deoxycorticosterone levels. 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase deficiency is the least common variety. The severe form leads to impaired synthesis of aldosterone, cortisol, and sex steroids. Affected females exhibit mild clitoromegaly and labial fusion, accompanied by symptoms of aldosterone and cortisol deficiency. Diagnosis is by increased levels of 17 hydroxypregnolone and dehydroepiandosterone. Prenatal screening can be done during first trimester by HLA genotype or by DNA analysis of genes within the HLA complex. 
in cells obtained by chorionic villus sampling at 9 to 11 weeks gestation gestation uh, mother's treatment is done by dexamethasone which uh, crosses the placenta and suppresses the fetal secretion of acth thereby preventing virilization of genitalia dexamethasone can also be given preemptively in patient at high risk and it should not be given after 9 weeks since L lmp because the internal external genitalia development is complete a number of series have established the effectiveness of prenatal treatment with dexamethasone in 85% of cases and the, but the long term effects of dexamethasone on fetus are controversial affected uh, children are treated with hydrocortisone in childhood and adolescence but those with salt wasting type require increased salt intake and mineral corticoid along with hydrocortisone hydrocortisone's role is to supply the deficient hormone suppress pituitary acth and help adrenal androgens and virilization prevent abnormally rapid somatic and bone growth it allows for normal gonadal development and corrects salt water loss or hypertension in complicated forms after control of acute stage maintenance with fludrocortisone is instituted surgical man management uh, can be done in the form of genitoplasty for extensively virilized females at 6 to 12 months of age uh, though in well treated patients long term fertility menstruation feminization is seen and the role of bilateral endrinectomy is still controversial 46 xy dsd or the under masculinized male these patients uh, with present with abnormal testicular differentiation defects in testosterone biosynthesis and impaired testosterone action the phenotype may, the phenotype may be limited to aberrant testicular differentiation or may include other anomalies anomalies there is loss of function uh, mutations in sox9 which are typically associated with gonadal dysgenesis and catastrophic campomelic dysplasia There are mutations in GATA4, which may also be associated with congenital heart disease, in addition to testicular anomalies. Several phenotypes or syndromes have been associated with WT1 mutations, including Dennis-Strauss syndrome, Frazier syndrome, Meesham syndrome, and the Wegener syndromes. Leading cell dis uh, leading cell aplasia is a rare disorder. The patients are 46 XY male karyotype with normal appearing female phenotype. Gonads are often palpable in the inguinal region or labia with short vaginal tract. Uh, HCG stimulation test uh, characteristically shows no rise in serum testosterone levels. Uh, differential diagnosis include uh, complete androgen insensitivity syndrome. Moving on to uh, complete androgen insensitivity syndrome, there is complete resistance of androgen receptor function, and it is characterized by 46 XY karyotype. Bilateral test is female appearing external genitalia with breast development and feminine body hab habitus with absence of pubic and axillary hair, and there is absence of mullerian derivatives. Incidence is one in twenty thousand to one in sixty thousand males. Patients present with postpubertal primary amenorrhea or finding of a testis at inguinal hernia. On examination, there is a blind ending and short vagina. Endocrine evaluation in the neonatal period shows normal levels of hormones, whereas at puberty it shows increased increased levels of gonadotropins with increased levels of estradiol due to peripheral aromatization. Pre-puberty diagnosis can be uh, confirmed by PCR to characterize androgen receptor gene in DNA obtained from uh, Venus. Blood sample to detect to, de uh, to detect genetic mutation, whereas post puberty uh, diagnosis can be made by karyotype, endocrine evaluation, pelvic uh, ultrasound for the absence of mullerian structures, and a vaginal examination. Management includes a delayed gonadectomy, except in cases of palpable testes or testes in guanal hernia, with cyclical uh, estrogen and progesterone therapy and progressive dilatation of vagina. Partial androgen insensitivity syndrome. Uh, they, these are X-linked disorders of incomplete masculinization with a spectrum of phenotypic abnormalities with varying degrees of ambiguity of external genitalia. Classically, males with perineus, crotal hypospadiasis, cryptorchidism, rudimentary wolfenstein structures, gynecomastia, and infertility. Diagnosis can be confirmed by karyotype, presence of ambiguous genitalia, a pelvic ultrasound, HCG stimulation test, and characterization of androgen receptor gene in serum DNA by PCR. Management has to be individualized because of variations in phenotype. If these patients are reared as female, then gonadectomy and surgical reconstruction of external genitalia with estrogen progesterone replacement at puberty. And if they are raised as male, then treatment of cryptorchidism, gynecomastia reduction, and genital reconstruction is done. This is the same pectoral representation with differences in complete androgen and partial androgen sensitivity syndrome. Five alpha reductase deficiency. 5-alpha reductase is a microsomal enzyme which converts testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. It is present in two isozyme forms: a type one present on being encoded by chromosome five, and type two being encoded by chromosome two. And type two has high levels in prostate in external genitalia. 
male underutilization that happens in 5 alpha reductase deficiency is usually secondary to mutations in the type 2 gene these usually present as neonates with 46xy karyotype with wide range of varying phenotypes typically they have very small phallus looking like a normal or enlarged clitoris a, a urogenital sinus is present with convergence of vaginal and urethral channels with labiostrotal fusion a short and blind ending vagina the testes and epididymis are located in labia inguinal canals and abdomen vast dominating in a blind ending vaginal pouch at puberty this partial masculinization with increase in muscle mass development of male body habitus increase in phallic size and onset of erections the sperm production and fertility in affected individuals have been reported but other sex secondary sexual characteristics including enlargement of prostate and hairline recession do not develop the endocrine profile of this patient shows an increase in plasma testosterone and low dihydrotestosterone levels after test hcg stimulation the testosterone to dht ratio increases to more than 20 is to 1 management includes most are raised as males with surgical correction of cryptorchidism and hypospadias for fertility intrauterine insemination can be considered though exogenous dht or dihydrotestosterone can be given at puberty to promote phallic growth but it would impair spermatogenesis persistent mullerian duck syndrome these are associated with mutations with either anti mullerian hormone or anti mullerian hormone receptor 2 gene with autosomal recessive inheritance typically these patients are phenotypic males with 46xy karyotype unilateral or bilateral undescended testes and normal external male external genitalia internal mullerian duct structures are present in the form of bilateral fallopian tubes uterus and upper vagina draining into prostatic utricle these are commonly diagnosed after mullerian tissue is encountered during inguinal hernioraphy or orchidopexy these patients are divided into three categories majority having bilateral intra abdominal testes in a position which is analogous to ovaries the classical presentation of hernia uterea inguinal is present in 20 to 30% of cases in which one testis is found in a hernia sac or scrotum in association with contralateral inguinal hernia a very few patients may present with both testes located in the same hernia sac along with fallopian tubes and uterus management include uh, includes orchidopexy while managing mullerian structures in this patient it is very important to remember that the vas is present in very close proximity to uterus and the proximal vagina and hence preservation of mullerian structures avoids injury to vas thereby preserving fertility but uh, if these mullerian structures are retained it may result in malignancy therefore if required very careful laparoscopic surgical excision can be done moving on to mrkh syndrome there is congenital abscess of uterus and vagina this symmetrical anatomy with absence of both vagina and uterus and normal ovaries and fallopian tubes present with normal ovarian function uh, incidence is 1 in 400 to 5000 4000 uh, 4, to 5000 female births patients have a 46 xx karyotype with normal appearing females with normal secondary sexual characteristics and a shallow vaginal pouch most commonly these patients present with primary amenorrhea but may also present with infertility or dyspareunia they are associated with upper urinary tract abnormalities in one third of cases with renal agenesis pelvic kidney and horseshoe kidneys being most common radiological evaluation with usu mri is done to define mullerian duct anatomy management includes cre- uh, creation of a neo vagina by either dilatation or surgical creation surgical creation a uh, successful outcome with dilatation has made it the first line of therapy Uh, if a hemi uterus is present it is removed surgically but if a midline uterine remnant is present it is hormonally suppressed upcoming treatment big uterine transplantation now the most important part of treatment of ambiguous genitalia or dsd that is psychosocial support to the parents always always show the baby to the parents counsel both the parents together do not commit unless sure what you are going to tell the parents the baby always tell the parents that the baby is healthy but the external genitalia is incompletely developed and test may be necessary to determine the sex of the child there are other always tell them that there are other babies in this world which who have similar condition and there are number of number of treatable conditions which can result in atypical genitalia and these treatable and give them reassurance that these treatable conditions may have a good outcome uh, after the treatment give them app app times and names of the people who will come and see them always talk about their fears of future sexual identity and sexual orientation of the child preferably with a psychologist and support them always when it comes to facing their friends and relatives with this uh, i conclude my presentation thank you for a patient hearing thank you sayam for very elaborative and very difficult presentation you have made but uh, i think it covers most of the topics in dsd 
now i would like to invite sir to give his expert comment please sir uh, thank you thank you dr sanjay uh, for making a very nice presentation you started in a very uh, nice way uh, i must comment thank you sir for that yes so nachiket any comments then i would just end up सर मुझे पता है कि आप जान करके मुझसे पूछ रहे हैं इस टॉपिक के बारे में क्योंकि ये ना मुझे खुद ही कुछ नहीं आता है एंड आई न्यू दैट द फर्स्ट थिंग जो आप मुझसे पूछोगे वो इसके बारे में यही है और मैं तो अभी अपने ड्रिप लगाने जा रहा हूँ क्योंकि एम के टाइम से ये ऐसा फोबिया वाला टॉपिक है मेरे लिए तो मैं अभी एक लीटर आर लगा के फिर ज्वाइन करता हूँ सर आपके बारे में सही है सही आई थिंक डॉक्टर संजय पांडे डॉक्टर संजय पांडे ज्वाइन uh i am not saying no you not join the kiya i am not saying him any of the residents or uh, faculty member has any query or any comment to make otherwise i will just uh, give my comments sir. yes uh, sanjay sayam uh, sir uh, what is the role of early versus delayed chondrectomy in this patients which should be done and when it should be done okay very good so so let me tell you uh, exactly because the gonadectomy would not be uh, it would be done only in some of these patients who are of the mixed variety like so mixed variety would include uh, over testicular dsd mixed gonadal dysgenesis and pure even pure gonadal dysgenesis only these patients would require a kind of a, a exploration laparoscopic uh, test, uh, gonadectomy or gonadal biopsy or even if they have a streak gonad they will require a gonadectomy so if you have a patient who has a 46 uh, xy dsd or 46 xx dsd usually they would not require a gonadectomy uh, only in cases if suppose a 46 xx is reared as a male or a 46 xy is reared as a female so in that case they may later may have to uh, uh, remove the gonads so that the uh, rearing uh, continues in the same manner so this is a uh, in a kind of a just a smaller nutshell a few things that i would just like to uh, say uh, from your presentation is one is as i yesterday only said to dr sanjay that uh, it is commonly thought and uh, that ovary usually develops by a default mechanism when you do not have that srvi gene and the testis doesn't develop and then ovary so usually uh, it's it's uh, many studies have shown that there are many genes also responsible for development of ovaries it's not just a, a simple default mechanism secondly uh, you said about the gender identity uh, which depends upon the social and cultural rearing which is probably not correct gender identity is dependent on many other causes so this gender dysphoria is a very important topic and this identity would depend upon genetic causes about hormonal influence uh, of the fetus in utero and also the environmental influences later so so there is a some kind of there is research going on which says that there's some kind of imprint on the brain which develops in utero which develops later uh, this gender dysphoria so a, a full fledged male will behave uh, will would like to become a female a full fledged female would like to become a, a male uh, that is actually gender dysphoria and that usually develops uh, due to genetic causes and hormonal influence in utero third is uh, the incidence of this dsd is very high in patients with hyperspadias and cryptorchidism so very be very careful it is around 17 to 50% so particularly in kind of a proximal hyperspadias right uh, you mentioned about the penile stretched length also mention the clitoral length so the, you know the commonest is congenital adrenal hyperplasia and then you have to see the length of the clitoris so clitoral length is normally 3.3 to 6.5 mm and if it goes more than 9 mm you call it clitoromegaly right so this was uh, uh, on your presentation uh, i would just conclude within maybe 5 uh, minutes uh, the whole subject right so uh, for the benefit of the residents definitely so uh, this is a very complex topic and this poses many many challenges uh, not only in terms of medical surgical ethical psychosocial and physical issues 
uh, for both patients and their uh, parents. So as you said, it is a social emergency and it could be a medical emergency, particularly in a case of CAH, which is salt losing variety, right? A patient can come as an acute emergency with uh, dehydration, vomiting, all these things. And, and then you have to treat it uh, in the emergency. So basically, this whole thing results from discordance, which occurs in the processes of chromosomal, gonadal, and phenotypic sex determination, right? So there is some di uh, discordance, and this discordance can occur usually due to mutation of the various genes. So the various, the commonest is the SRY gene. SRY gene, which is responsible for the male gonad. And other genes like SOX9 gene, uh, SF1, which is the steroid uh, factor 1 gene. So all these uh, may be responsible for uh, this discordance. Then you have the imbalanced hormonal milieu, which is there in utero, is the second important cause. And third is that sometimes there is aromatase deficiency, particularly if there is a placental deficiency of aromatase, or there is a tumor like placental lutioma, which can cause, again, uh, these problems. And then the exposure to the hormones when the, when the mother uh, is pregnant, right? When the, uh, so there's exogenous hormones also can result uh, in this kind of uh, discordance. So, so when you have a patient of ambiguous genitalia, particularly, as you said, if there's a bilateral undescended testis, or if it is a unilateral undescended testis with uh, hypospadias, or it is a case of perineoscrotal hypospadias, or there is a, a kind of a very small penis or micro penis, or there is a clitoromegaly, all these would suggest you that this patient could be a case of ambiguous genitalia. There is a controversy regarding Klinefelter syndrome and Turner syndrome because these patients do not present with ambiguous genitalia, but they are part of the DSD as a sex chromosome DSD, but they, they would not present as ambiguous genitalia, right? So later they may have a small testes and all that, but uh, they would not present as the ambiguous genitalia. So the commonest is CAH, right? With uh, the 21 hydroxylase deficiency, the second most common is, uh, you said mixed gonadal, some would say the androgen insensitivity syndrome is the second most common uh, DSD. This is also called testicular feminization syndrome. And the third common is the mixed gonadal dysgenesis. So when a patient comes with uh, this type of problem, you go ahead, take a proper history of this patient. And history, in the history, the most important things are you ask about exposure to androgens to the mother. You ask about maternal virilization during the pregnancy. It's important because the placental aromatase deficiency or luteoma of placenta and all those would cause virilization in the uh, female. And then you would ask about the uh, family history, which is again very important. History of consanguinity is very important. You know, consanguinous marriage would result in more of autosomal recessive disorders. So CH is an autosomal recessive disorder, which is the commonest DSD. So you have to ask about consanguinity, that is important, and history of neonatal death in the family. Again, is very important. So when uh, you have taken all this history, then you go ahead with the physical examination. Physical examination, very important, external genitalia, the penile stretched length should be at least more than 2.5 centimeters, but usually it is between 2.8 to 4.2 centimeters. And the clitoral length should be three to six millimeter. And if it goes above nine millimeter, it will be called as clitromegaly. Then you think, see about the openings, perineal openings. How many openings are there? That is again, very important. You can have a urogenital sinus, you have a kind of a cloaca, you have can, So you see the different openings and then you see the labial folds are fused or not. Huh? And the fourth is, uh, you would see whether there is an inguinal mass or not, inguinal swelling or not. And so, and then you do a digital rectal examination and you see a, a rectal examination. If you file the anterior midline cord like structure, that tells you that, that this could be the Mullerian structure or the uterus, right? 
Once you have done the history physical examination, then you go ahead with doing the investigation. Investigation karyotyping is important to know whether this is XX, XY, or other mosaic variety. And then another important thing is about fish for SRY gene. Because many of these XY may not have the SRY gene. And many of XX may have SRY gene. So doing a fish for SRY gene is again a very important part of an investigation if it is available, right? And then you have to go ahead with doing the uh, serum investigation. You know, 17 hydroxyprogesterone is the most important thing to be done because uh, if it is more than 2000 nanogram per deciliter, it says that it goes in favor of a CAH, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And then you would do a serum electrolytes. Uh, and if you have a 46 XY DSD, you would do a DHEA, 11 deoxycortisol, 17 hydroxy pregnenolone. And if you have other tests like stimulation tests, you can do a ACTH stimulation test. You will do a SCG stimulation test. If it is a 46 XY DSD later to find out whether this is deficiency of androgens or deficiency in the androgen response, you would differentiate it by SCG stimulation test, right? And then you go ahead with the different other investigations to find out whether the Mullerian structures are present or not, or the gonads are intra-abdominal or not by an ultrasound or MRI, right? And then again, you could do a vaginoscopy or a laparoscopy or a genitogram. Yeah? And the last thing to do is a gonadal biopsy. So all these will tell you exactly to come to a diagnosis. So management of a C, uh, DSD, the three things are very important. One, it's initial stabilization. If the patient comes with an acute emergency, the stabilization of the patient is the foremost thing. And the second would be to the accurate diagnosis. So by all these things, you have to at least diagnose the patient, what exactly type of DSD it is. And the third important thing is the gender assignment. And the gender assignment, previously it was thought that the two things were very important, the phallic functionality and the future outcome for fertility. That usually uh, determined the gender reassignment. But now we know that these patients will have a very poor outcome if you do a gender reassignment in the early childhood. So most of these patients, you have to wait till the puberty or till you get the actual gender identity or the sexual orientation of the patient. And then you will decide the gender uh, identity or reassign the gender for these patients. So that was in a nutshell. Thank you very much, all of you. Uh, all the residents and all the faculty members, uh, and uh, have a very good day. Uh, Dr. Govind, uh, please uh, give a vote of thanks, and then we will wrap up. Thank you, Dr. Sam. Thank you, sir. And thank you, everybody who have joined us on various platforms for this teaching session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, sir.